Welcome to this week's edition of Indigo Living on the Couch series, celebrating women across the region breaking boundaries, glass ceilings, and all of that good stuff. But this week, well, we're talking about the hottest trends happening in the finance world. NFTs, blockchains, investing, and I'm so thrilled to be welcoming today's guest, founder of Venture Souk, Sonia Gokul. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Roseman, and thank you to Indigo Living for having uh, having me here on the couch with you. So I know you've had a crazy week. You just spoke at the STEP conference, yeah, yeah. which is about startups and investing. Yeah. And now we're going to, I want to say, simplify everything <laughs> you're doing because we want to learn about these trends. All yeah. we're hearing about is NFTs and blockchains, and it's really overwhelming because everything's new. Mm -hmm. We've been forced into this digital world very quickly. Yes, I'm absolutely. Gonna say. Yeah. Um, let's. Can we highlight what you were speaking about this week? Yeah, absolutely. So this week, uh, I, I was on a, on a panel as an investor with two of actual of our portfolio companies. Our portfolio companies are just essentially companies that we've invested into. Um, so if I give you a little bit of background on what I do and uh, what yeah, I'm going to ask yeah. you, but uh, so I want to know. If I start there. <laughs> yeah, because you have such an incredible career as a woman in finance, investing. You came from Canada. We have so much to cover <laughs> how you got here. Um, yeah, let's start with how you how you got to Dubai. Sure. Um, so I'm Canadian, just like you, yes. which is very, very nice to, to sit on the couch with a fellow Canadian. Um, and I'm an actuary by training. So an actuary is simply someone that goes into insurance companies um, or pension plans and values them or determines your, your insurance premiums. Sounds like a very boring job. It actually is not the most exciting. It's, it's a girl, you need to be nice to, basically. <laughs> it's a lot of math and statistics. So I, got, I had this like nice fine like mathematical statistical background um, and I was an actuary in Canada uh, working on you know Bay Street like you know like you do when you graduate from Canada and then I moved out to Dubai in 2011 because my husband uh, was a lawyer got, got a job out here with uh, uh, a, a British law firm called Ellen Novery and then when we got here I was still working for the same company um, and I was doing my actual consulting here and um, and I re realized that you know there's a whole other world of finance outside of the the actuarial world. And I switched over and started working with one at one of the sovereign wealth funds in Abu Dhabi. So I essentially switched to become like on the investment side as opposed to valuing evaluating the the liability side. Um, which also is very uninteresting, but it essentially is, I became very... an investor. Like, and 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 that's kind of the beauty of coming to Dubai versus every, anywhere else, it, your career takes very different twists and turns. So for me doing something very technical to becoming an investor was, it's clearly, it's a very Dubai phenomenon to be able to do I that. I always say that it's one of these places mm -hmm. where you adapt really quickly yeah. because change happens so quickly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Dubai is very special in that yes. place. But it I would that it, would be it somewhere else in the world. You it couldn't. Would, you it wouldn't change, happen. It wouldn't right? be able to pivot so much. And that pivot helped me so much to build my own company after because I became an investor at a sovereign wealth fund where we were investing in you know, growth stage tech companies. And then later, I, I started this business venture souk with my husband and two other partners. Um, got to uh, my partner Sonia Tamer and uh, Sunil, and we started investing in early stage stage startups so and but what, what was that point because I know yeah. in Abu Dhabi you're at one of the biggest companies in the world yes, um, and there is this sense of entrepreneurship which has risk mm -hmm. right it's yeah. risk it's hard work it's not a defined schedule and you have the corporate side where there's this element of security you're working hard yeah and, and it's like definitely very secure position. what was that moment where you and your husband decided to to jump ship and it's actually very fun we did everything at the same time we had a kid at the same time uh, and then switched uh, switched jobs at the same time uh, and both of us and for both of us to do this together that means we had a lot of conviction in what we were doing because we didn't have that security net of one of us working this like secure job while one of us uh, started off our own company we both kind of did it together um so it was a big risk but we we believed in ourselves and we believed in our partners uh, and we believed in the vision we were doing and at that time 
tech was really, really booming. It really, and it, it was really the, the industry to, to be in. Um, and so we're really, really happy we made that move. So essentially what VentureSuit does is we invest in early stage tech companies. So we're looking for the next Uber, the next Airbnb, but we want to invest very, very early on. So what that means is when you're investing that money, you have to invest in many different companies and hope, hope and pray one of them is going to be your next Uber, your next Airbnb. Um, so we literally scour the world looking for, for early stage companies tech companies to invest in. And what company grabs your attention? Because it, it, I feel, I want I don't know if this is right or not, but it feels like it's kind of like Russian roulette, right? Yeah. Like you do all the research, but yeah. how many companies go to that Uber level? We're actually seeing that now because our portfolio is maturing a bit more and we've had, we've actually had a nice exit here um, in the region, a company called Kitopi, which a lot of people know, but they, it, it's, it, it's kind of sits behind the scenes where um, if you, if you um, order something on Deliveroo, it comes from a cloud kitchen which is most likely Katopi, uh, and we were investors in that company, and we uh, and we sold out of our position. So we had a nice exit there. That was a fantastic company for us. It's a fantastic exit. That is actually a real success story for yeah. the region. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and the founder is very young. Yeah, and very very fantastic, fantastic founder. So you yeah. spotted that investment. And then when did you know that you wanted to exit? Like, how do you oh, know soft, that you wanted soft, to? Uh, soft bank soft bank came, in. came in and was like, exit, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, usually the exit's very clear Yeah. Um, for us in our, in our industry because either someone's coming in and buying out or there's an IPO that happens. So, um, but there's a lot of opportunities along the way where people want to come in and say, do you want to exit your position? Can we buy you out? Uh, and most like nine times out of 10, we, we, we stay and we stick it. We wow. stick it through to the end because we really want to have that that real big return as opposed to like taking these smaller returns in, in between. So it's a decision we always have to make as a company, but uh, uh, we usually try to stay in. This region has been all about being a smart city. So is this a hub for techs to start businesses? Absolutely, absolutely. And so we, as VentureSoup, initially started investing in a lot of global companies. Um, we invested in companies in India, we invested in companies in the States, and some of them are doing, are doing quite well. But we recently just focused on Armina. We launched Armina Fund and we focused on the region and specifically FinTech in, in, in the region. And, that, and that's clearly a sign of just the ecosystem maturing here. We're seeing amazing founders come out, amazing companies come out, and they're solving real problems that we still have here in tech that, um, and, and, they're, and they're making it a better, a better place for us to, to, you know, live and operate. Cause now you do everything on tech and that's, that's really because they've got, uh, investment from, you know, people like, uh, um, like, uh, firms like, uh, us, like funds like us. And let's go back. We talked this words fintech. Let's break it down. Where are these jargon words? What do they mean? <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're gonna need a dictionary at fintech. the end of this. At and the end of this the program. So fintech is really just financial technology. So anything in finance and technology, you mix it to, it becomes it becomes fintech. Uh, and we had a lot of white space here because we we're like, if you think about you know, five years ago, we were still doing a lot of cash transactions. You get you jump into a taxi and they're like, oh, do you have Cash. No, <laughs> and then and I don't have change. You don't I have, don't to have do coins that anymore. Yeah. You don't like you're you, like even like the, like COVID, as as horrible and how tough it was for most people. Um, you it accelerated fintech in the region because yeah. now everything is done. Payments, you're tapping everything. There's contactless. Um, so we've seen an acceleration of fintech in, in the region. We always say that almost every tech company is almost a fintech company because there's some sort of payments angle in there, and there's some you're accepting and taking payments, or there's credit offered, or some sort of finance offered. So fintech just exists everywhere. And so anyone starting a business, a checklist would be making sure your tech side is super smooth. Yeah. Transactions have to be cardless, safe, secure. Well, if you're if you're starting a business, first of all, you have to make sure you're you're solving something that's a real problem. Yeah. So that's you a go good back, tip right there, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you go back and say, look, if I'm solving am I solving something that's a real problem? Am I solving something that has a market, like a big market? Like if you're solving a very niche, small little issue for a very small subset of the floor of the market, uh, it's it's great for that subset, but they, they won't you won't do it really well because you have to make sure you're you're solving something for a very big market. And that's what we look for uh, in our companies when we're, when we're investing. Are they solving a real problem? Are they solving, um, are they hitting a really a, a big market? And is there is there tech 
smooth and really good. And how do you make your tech smooth and, and good? You, you really have to build that, that infrastructure. So get yourself a CTO <laughs> that, that knows more than you do yeah. <laughs> about tech. And there's, and we always joke around that the CTOs are like the kind of heart of the, of the business because they, they're usually the, the smartest one in the room and they, yeah. and they're building that technology that you own and, um, and, and that you, that you will grow with you in your company. Yeah, I think that's actually a great tip when you are building your team, making sure that you have people that have expertise in that yeah. skill set because this is an ever evolving yeah. field. Like yeah. people can't keep up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you want to have your CTO or your tech moving moving fast with your technology and you be able to you want to own your tech as well. So fast forward, we get to Step Conference. It's yes. a very well-known conference yeah. here in Dubai. Um, does it attract international people or is it very absolutely. MENA related? Absolutely. We've had all week, we've had, you know, people coming into the region saying, hey, we're in town, you ready? are you here to meet? So we've had a lot of interest uh, from you know, just your contacts we have abroad that are coming in. Uh, it was finally in person after yeah. like, being virtual for uh, COVID. And uh, it was nice to see everybody that's in the industry face to face. It was nice to meet some new companies that were, that were out and talking to, to people, some good talks. Uh, on the on the main stage, it was it was a nice conference. It was nice having it having a. And pack. you were on the panel, which is incredible. We like having power women on the panel. So it was great to be on stage. Uh, we were I was on a panel where we uh, with two of my portfolio companies, and we were talking about an accelerator called uh, Y Combinator that they that they went through in um, in Silicon Valley. So and we're big investors with uh, with Y Combinator. It's a great it's a great accelerator. So that was the the topic of the. The panel, um, but it was nice to, to speak with our portfolio companies. Our portfolio companies are just companies that we invested in, so we came in early and then now really watching them grow. It's it's really fantastic. Like little babies, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we we love them both. Uh, one of them is like the Robin Hood region, where um, called Baraka, where you you go in and you you trade you trade stocks, etc. On that region, just make it more accessible to people to people who are here. To, and the greatest thing about this is that um, on Baraka, if you're trying to trade stocks, they give you a lot of information. So for them, they're empowering people to have information and make informed decisions when they're when they're trading stocks, as opposed to just giving you a platform to, to trade stocks. And so that that is like that's a good tip. Yeah. yeah, is to is to spend the time read about the stocks you're buying and 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 make informed decisions. And now this latest trend in the market is, I don't even know if it's a trend, but <laughs> NFTs and all. What is this space? So it's, uh, so the whole universe of crypto and cryptology is, uh, it, it's vast and, and anyone, and it, it's, it's evolving very quickly. So things are changing constantly. Um, but it's the evolution of where we get to is, is the interesting part. So we started off with web, web one, like a web one photo, and that's, what we like, what we call like emails and static, um, you know, websites where it just you're able to communicate with people and send and send information in static uh, websites. Now we moved on from that, which was very nice at the time. I, 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 I'm probably aging myself, but that you know, I was part of I that was process. Part of that. Yeah, I was a part of <laughs> you that. You get your field, first email address, etc., and you're like, now I can talk to people. Then you move on to Web 2.0, which is much more dynamic where you're using you know the internet for so, it's social interactions and you're you're able to create content you're the, the facebook's the instagram's everything in the world has come in and you're able to put more out there and uh you know you have apps that have formed under under, under web point uh, 2.0 so the world changed completely under this this web 2.0 you have the gig economy where people are making money off of the off of the internet in ways that they've never been able to do if you're on an offline environment so this has completely changed everything in which we operate to the point where kids would not even recognize you know the the, the time before the internet uh, and then now we're moving to web 3.0 and web 3 is a, a very interesting part because now people are saying you know you know it's very volatile is it here to stay like is it a, is it a hoax or is there a bubble there's a lot of questions around the crypto space, but it's the evolution of now we're in this web 3.0, which is here to stay. There's, but it's gonna, but it, the question is what, what, what would it look like? So when web 2.0 started, you had like MySpace and stuff like that. That doesn't exist anymore. That mm. didn't stay. So we don't know if the if the things that we're working on in web 3.0 right now will stay, but it is the way in which we're gonna work. So now with web 3.0, well, the way it works is it's now taking things 
and moved it to a, a people. So you have, what's a blockchain? A blockchain, it, it's a simple thing of being um, an online ledger. And so everything is on the blockchain now. So everything is on, on web, web, you know, it's on the blockchain. The blockchain is um, a permanent ledger online that cannot change and it's just a record. And what, what does that mean? You can use this for multiple different types of things. You can put it online, you can put, you know, a record of medical records online, or you can build cryptocurrencies on the blockchain. So it, or you can build the NFTs on the blockchain. I will say one of the one done. of the best examples I heard of blockchain to, to break it down was the idea of supply chain. So mm -hmm. something like a grocery store can actually track exactly. where the strawberries yeah. came from yeah. in one country. It keeps an, and it keeps an, a record of yeah. every single thing that you're doing and it's unchangeable. So you, you can't change that record, which is amazing. Yeah, so I found blockchain. Yeah. I could understand blockchain yes. and that and how it works and I thought that was actually so relevant, especially yeah. in a time where you're getting products from all over the world and you can actually track that very specific product to the manufacturer. Yes. That would, NFT. Like, and then if you take that simple yeah. concept okay. of building something that's on a, on, on, on a like, record that's unchangeable. What house are you, people are like buying houses on the <laughs> yeah. What house are you buying? So, like what is the meta, who owns the meta universe? Like if you move very forward, then you have every sort of way in which you can use the blockchain. Yeah. So people are building currencies, people are building virtual worlds on it. People are building, you know, these NFTs, which are, you know, just, it's just like a digital art but if you're because of the blockchain technology you're able to build a unique thing in that has a short supply and so if you go out there and say i'm going to build 10,000 boards um like board ape yacht club they built 10,000 of these these apes and now there's a short supply of these many different things so it's like having like having a, you know going to a store or like a designer that did a limited collection everybody wants them yeah. right and so now you've got all this demand for this product and to and anything at the end of the day anything has value if someone wants to buy buy it if Devin's willing to give you currency trade or anything if that brings its value so the nft has its value because someone has created a limited supply of apes or you know witches or anything that you decide to build on 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 the on the uh on the blockchain and then someone has is going to give you value for that and because there's someone's willing to do that transaction it it creates this value. So you have people that, like Jimmy Fallon bought a board of an ape, you know, yeah. and, like, and, he, and Paris Hilton bought, bought an ape. And then, and so because it has that value, it, you know, people can trade it and they, and they can keep it. And, you know, they're, it's just, it's just like art. It's just like having art, but the technology gives you the uniqueness. And because it's unique, you can, you, you can, it, it creates a value to it. And then you move on to the metaverse. <laughs> but there's we nothing tangible, right? In so you metaverse. get this, wait, so you get this ape, right? The yes. ape face, which is kind of like that cartoon, right? Yes, face yeah. That, uh, yeah. You hold I've the digital that. address of it. Yeah. And but then, it's unique and, and nobody unique. else can have it. And you, and you own it. And that's, that's what makes it And so value. it just sits on your laptop or in this yes, universe. Yes, absolutely. And, you can, and because you have it and it's unique to you, it, it, it has its value. And anything can have it, can have value as long as someone's willing to, to place value to it. So now you move into this like in the universe where we have we're living and we're now where it's a metaverse and now that people are buying property like Snoop yeah. Dogg bought property. <laughs> we had a conversation about this, <laughs> um, right? There was like a property next to Snoop, Snoop Dogg which sold yeah. for like four hundred thousand dollars or something. Yeah. Something ridiculous. So Snoop like Snoop Dogg bought property uh, on on the metaverse. And so the idea of buying property on the metaverse is it's it, that I think people can understand it a little bit more because it's like buying property in an up and coming space. You know that so what the, what they're doing is that right now you're buying property you can't live in it yet but it's it's like buying a, like a a land knowing you're going to build on it later. So you know we know that that you know the universe or like Meta like Facebook are building these goggles where you have virtual reality and you'll be able to live in this space in the future once that technology 
is created. So people are buying these these properties in the metaverse on the promise that you know what we will eventually be able to put on these goggles and live in this in this metaverse land and um, and and, that, and that, really that's a lot of where the world is going. We don't like I can't say that this what value this property is going to have value or or what. But people the reason why people are buying it is is what is is what they see the future will bring, not what it is right right now. So it's a promise of something. But are in you the future. are you getting? like a virtual tour of Snoop's house? You can, or, or you, like, he, can li he, he will put on a Google, go on the, yeah. the goggles and be able to like live in this virtual reality place that he's bought in, in the metaverse. And so if you're a neighbor is you can like share sugar. <laughs> yeah, or like have a coffee. That's the idea. Really? That's the idea. But who's getting this Even money? Like who are you paying? This is what I get. Like who, who are you paying $400,000 to? Like where is that money? going like, <laughs> in the metaverse oh, yeah. like, like, so the way it works is um so the idea of this whole concept is to decentralize where money goes right so usually in the in the past when you when you buy something you're buying it from like a big store or you're buying it from the government and there's very centralized places where everything kind of happened like uh, and so you're, you're, you know where that's going. And so now the concept of this of Web3 is to decentralize that, to give it to the people. So you, I can, can create an NFT, like mint an NFT tomorrow, and someone paying me for that. And I don't, I'm not a big store. I, I didn't have to have manufacturing plants in order to do things and have a very centralized place. It's I've created this thing and now I'm able to sell it. So it's, it's giving, it's giving more power to the, the, the people um, as opposed to centralized groups of people like governments and banks and institutions and big conglomerates. It's, it's, it's empowering in people. So it's, it's, it's really going to change a lot of the way in which the world works. We don't know how, yeah. but it will change. But we have to keep an eye on it. Yes, sure. exactly. So we, like, we joke around, we're like, what to buy, what not to buy. It's hard to say, like what what's going to make it through, what's not. Is Bitcoin useful, or is Ether use, useful? And like, I, some people like he's like, I can't go and buy something in Bitcoin, so why am I? Why am I? I can't go to the store and buy something in Bitcoin, yeah. and why am I buying this currency? It's what the future brings, and it's actually a lot of the metaverse and a lot of what's going on in, in in the crypto world is done on on Ether. Like NFTs are done on Ether, so Ether moved as many transactions that Visa did last year which wow. is insane. <laughs> and so there's a lot happening here. So it's not it's not something that we can ignore, um, but you have to keep an eye on I mean, companies like Jacob & Co. Watches, mm. um, I think Christie's and Sotheby's, they've yes. all started taking Bitcoin as a form of payment. Yeah, which is, which is showing that, you know what, everyone's realizing that it's here to stay and it's uh, it's going to be in a, a way and people are going to transact. Our kids are not going to be able to take your money. There's no way they're going to, they won't even know what it is. Like, they'll laugh at us later to say, well, you actually had cash? What is that like? Yeah. Like frame it now, you know, it's yeah, going to yeah. be, it's going to be an antique at some point. Like it's, it, the world is changing. So we actually, even our company, we're 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 hiring younger and younger talent because they get the space better than better than, than we do. And in order to really make money and um, properly transact in this space, you, we have to go, like almost like go back to school and learn about it and spend the time and spend hours um, learning about the space uh, in order in order to transact. It's the same way we in school learned about stocks and how to do we. We were taught formally how to do it, and then you graduate and you, you, you start trading in the stock market and you educate yourself. So there's a lot of education that we need to do um, in order for us to properly transact. Uh, and, but it's, it's here to stay, so and we encourage our kids to, to figure it out and, and learn more about it because and, and it, it's, it's going to be there in some way or form for, for them. So. I mean, we, I like my, my son who's four, watch, <laughs> we, we, he'll, he'll like watch the tick, the, the, the prices oh, really? and be like, what's Bitcoin doing today? What's Bitcoin doing today? Like, I was trading, um, something for our company, uh, like, uh, a token and he was, he was watching the price with me every day. We, we made a game out of it. <laughs> so, but so, it's great for them to yeah, learn. Yeah, it's a way, like, we, I really try to make sure your kids are in it, understand it, because they get it better than we do and it's, it's evolving and changing and, our associates get it better than we do. <laughs> really. And how should women invest going forward? What should what should we look for? So I think uh, if you're 
Like and starting a, small, not yes. starting at like a, a big number, but really just taking your salary and and you know putting a percentage of yeah. it aside to invest for the future. I think, I think the key is diversification. If you're whenever you have a portfolio of um, you have a certain set of money that you set aside and funds that you want to invest uh, that you're not using for you know your day to day living, um, you want to diversify. So we, I personally, my property, uh, I still buy a lot of property. We have put a little bit. We put some in the in the in the markets right now because that's still where a lot of transactions. And then right now because of the physical, space, property. physical property, physical property, <laughs> just to clarify that not a universe yeah. as a physical. Property. And uh, because and so and I personally have a lot in private tech in tech opportunities because that's you know the industry I'm in and and where we where we know most. Um, so a lot of my funds are, are are there. And then then we also and so whatever you have right now because crypto and this world is still evolving it's still very volatile which we've seen in the last few months and how crypto has gone from 60 to 30 and in k and in a matter of months you know it is very volatile uh discretionary funds go there for now until until we figure out what's going on and how it's going to evolve and keep learning as much as possible read as much as you can on it and learn as much as you can on it because some things will stick some things won't but it will be there in some form or another and can you can you just buy one Bitcoin and try it. Yeah, and well, yeah, yeah, because you actually can buy portions of a Bitcoin. So you, you don't have to spend $30,000 on a, on a Bitcoin, you can buy a portion of it. So you can go on an exchange, uh, there's multiple different exchanges that, that you can you can op or operate with and and uh, um, and just buy yourself a, a, a Bitcoin and then watch it and watch it move and see and see how and dabble a little bit. So there's Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, the, the, the mainstream ones that, that people are looking at. That's so good. And what are your final tips for, for women just starting out? Diversification. Yeah. Don't put your money in, don't put too much in one place. Um, make sure you're you're spreading it around a little bit so that you have a nice, you know, even portfolio that, because you don't want to put put too much in one place. I mean, like you work really hard for that. And you don't, and you know, if, if that, if, if it does fluctuate, it does go down. You don't want to lose it all in place, so spread it out a little bit. And should you stay or, or always pull out? Oh, it's the rule. Have you of seen life. me? So H O D L. Hold on, for Gila. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's H O D L. So yeah, so I, I, I'm long. I'm very long. So I, I would, you know, so I, it's up to you if you want to hold or not. And a lot of people, you know, buy something and they, you know, sell and they, you know, oh, I guys, I sold on crypto and I can buy copper. Can yeah. do this. So uh, I'm a holder for now, but um, I, I bought pretty, pretty early. So if that's just me. Uh, I, I can't give advice to anybody else. It's the can't no, give investment advice, right. but yeah. this is what, this is what I yeah. this is what I did. Yeah. I love that. And yeah. here at Indigo Living, our motto is living beautifully. What does that mean to you? Oh, uh, for me, uh, living beautifully is is you know being with my friends and family. It's just a date with my friends and my family and my little boy and my husband makes me very happy. So that's a beautiful day for me. I love that. Thank you so much for watching. We are so excited to have Sonia. You are one of the leading women when it comes to finance investing in this space. <laughs> That's very kind. Um, you have to follow her. And of course, Venture Souk is a company you need to watch and learn from. Uh, you can catch Sonia speaking at so many panels across the globe. And we can't wait to follow your career. That's very kind. No, I'm such fun. a fan Thank of you. you. <laughs> and I know when I see you, I'm always asking you about how the space is going. And it's definitely a topic that is really overwhelming if you are not in this digital space and tech world. So thank you for breaking it down for us. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you to Indigo Living for having knowledge. me as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's episode of Leading Women on the Couch series with Indigo Living. Well, this week's episode was a wealth of knowledge talking about everything that is happening in the world of finance from fintech to NFTs, blockchains, and so much more. Having Sonia on the couch today was really just a brilliant discussion of where we need to go and where investing is going. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please follow us and of course follow VentureSook on Instagram and um, learn about her company and what they're doing and, and spaces to watch. We look forward to welcoming you next week.